Hi guys, we are going to be making this adorable kitty pencil case by Parker on the porch and I'm going to show you how we do this. This is what it looks like. Super cute. Now you're going to need some fabric. I'm using these two fabrics and I'm using 12 gauge clear vinyl. I'm using it. I'm doing the five by seven hoop size. So I'm using a nine inch zipper and then I'm using like one sheet of lightweight fusible interfacing. So I wanted to just go ahead and show you what it looks like. This is what we will be making. I'm going to be walking you through how to make the whole thing. So let's get started. I'll meet you at my machine. Okay, guys, we have the first design file open. That is the kitty ears. You have to make the ears first. I have my five by seven hoop, one sheet of tear away. I'm going to stitch the placement stitch of the ears directly onto my stabilizer. So go ahead and run step one and I'll come back and show you what it looks hey like. Hey guys, this is what your placement stitch looks like right here. I'm gonna go ahead and measure fabric that's big enough to go over both of them. You can do them individually if you want, but I'm just gonna do one big piece that goes this way and this way. So make sure you get whatever fabric you're using that's big enough to go over that. You, I have this piece right here, so I just measured and I'm just going to make sure it gets over all of those placement stitches like this. Now you're going to need two pieces this size because you're going to need, the next step's going to do the back. So it's going to be the front of the ears and the back of the ears. You can use two different colors. You can do whatever you like. I'm just going to use the same. So I have two pieces that are about the same size. So you only need the first piece now. So put it directly over all your placement stitches. Put it back on your hoop and go ahead and run step two. Step two is gonna tack that down. I will come back and show you what it looks like. There is the tack down and it has this line across that's gonna help us place it onto the bag later. But you can see that it went ahead and did it on both. Now you are gonna take whatever the back of your ears, this is the front of your ears, whatever the back of your ear fabric that you want, I'm using the exact same fabric. You are gonna do right sides together. So this is the right side. You're gonna do right sides together like this. Make sure you are getting over all those same placement stitches that we just went over. Make sure you have it lined up right if you're using directional fabric or anything like that, stripes or something. Okay, now you're gonna go ahead and stitch step three and I will come back and show you what it looks like. Okay guys, we are done stitching, so you can now take it out of your hoop. This is what it looks like. You can tear all your tear away off. If you want your ears like more stiff, you can leave this tear away in. I'm gonna take mine out and clean it all up. It's a preference, whichever you prefer. So I'm just going to get all the stabilizer out. If I can get it out. And you won't see it, so you don't have to make it perfect. Because we are going to flip these in a second. Okay, I'm going to just cut now. Okay, so you can see you have your stitch lines here. We are just gonna cut around this. Make sure you leave this excess down here. There's a line here, that's your excess. That's what we're gonna put inside the bag so it stays on the bag. So just go ahead and cut around here. Okay, and I'm just gonna cut straight down. And then you can see where this ends right here. You can actually just cut along this because it's the same. So just go ahead and cut across. You can set that over there for a second. Let's do the same to this side. Now you are going to turn these, so go ahead and open. You have a hole at the bottom. You're just going to turn them the other way. I'm going to use this turning system right here, and I'm going to do it kind of gently because you don't want to go through your woven fabric, but you want the point of your ear out really good. Okay, so I have that. 
And you're going to do the exact same thing to this one. Now I am going to iron them so they're nice and pointy. I just have this iron mat here. My iron's ready to go. I'm just going to put it, make sure that it's straight down. And I am going to iron it. Okay, so this ear is ready to go. This one. Now both my ears are ready to go. Now you can see there's a line on this side right here. That's what you're going to use to line it up into the bag. And I'll show you how to do that later. But for now, you can just set your ears aside. Those are ready to go. Go ahead, if you are making the 5 by 7 bag, which hoop size bag, which I am, go ahead and hoop your 5 by 7 with your one sheet of tearaway again. I will meet you at the machine and show you how we construct the bag. Okay, I am on my machine. I have my five by seven hoop, one sheet of tear away. I have the next file loaded, the bag file. Go ahead and stitch the placement step directly onto your stabilizer, and I will come back and show you what it looks like, guys. So this is what your placement stitch looks like right here, and this shows us a lot of stuff, but we'll, we'll get into all of it. But what we need right now is the zipper. Step two is gonna be placing a zipper. So this is my five by seven hoop size. I'm gonna use this nine inch zipper. Now I'm gonna go ahead and place it this direction, depending on which side you want the zipper pull on determines on if you want it to open this way, if you want it to open and the other way go this way um, the way you know that you have a big enough zipper for the bag you're making is you just need a zipper big enough that the bottom part can get past this placement stitch and the pole gets past that placement stitch then you know you have a big enough zipper it doesn't matter if you use a super long zipper you cut off the ends later anyways you just have to have a zipper big enough to get past the placement stitches right here now we are going to use this line right here to place this zipper you're going to take the edge of this fabric on your zipper right here and you're going to place it right next to these stitch lines just like that where you can see it but it's almost touching you want it like that all the way across you don't want it to go over you don't want it to be too far away the reasoning is is you have a very small um, space here where it's going to catch both sides so the placement of this zipper is really important for these top zip bags to work for you okay so make sure your zipper pulls on the outside and that it can your foot can get by here without hitting it make sure the end is on the outside and your foot can get by without hitting that and make sure you are exactly next to this placement stitch all the way across now you can tape either side so it doesn't move or you can hold it. I hold it like this and just move my fingers as it goes. What it's going to do, it's going to do one stitch right here. It's going to jump your teeth of your zipper and it's going to do another stitch right here. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and run that and I'll come back and show you what it looks like. My suggestion for any of the top zip bags that have a clear front we're going to be putting a clear front on here you're going to see this top stitch so you're going to want to use the same color thread as your zipper if you don't want to see it if it, you want it to blend more so i'm going to be using purple in this step and i'm going to go ahead and stitch it i'll come back and show you what it looks like all tacked down you can see that there's a line right here it's hard to super see it because it's purple that's why I was saying use the same color as the zipper so you don't see it so much right there and right there this is why you have to place it if you were like right here if we would have placed it down here over the line it wouldn't have caught there's not a much leeway though the space between these two is pretty thin and it has to be so you have to place the zipper pretty exact to get it to work Okay, so next what we're going to do is place the clear vinyl. Now, I use 12 gauge clear vinyl 
or larger. 12 gauge is how thick it is. If you use thinner than that, it normally pulls out of the bag. So don't use a lower number. You can use a lot a higher number, but I use 12 gauge. That's what this is. And I just bought it at Joann's on a roll. If you go back to the, they have the big rolls of stuff. Um, you just find the clear vinyl and it will be labeled 12 gauge or you can also order it from mypunkbroidery.com. Amy has a bunch of it too. Just go in there and, and it's labeled 12 gauge. You can buy it from there too. Okay, so you need a big enough piece. We're going to place this next. So you really just need to measure from the bottom of your zipper teeth down to this spot right here. You, I'm going to make mine a little bit bigger and then we'll trim it afterwards. So this is what size mine is right here. I'm not real exact. You want a clean edge that goes up next to your zipper right here. Okay, so just like that. So mine's a little big, but we will trim it down after we run the next step. The next step is going to go ahead and do a line all the way around the square, tacking down your clear vinyl to your stabilizer. So I will show you what that looks like as soon as I run Okay it. guys, this is what it looks like. It went ahead and stitched our clear vinyl down to our stabilizer. Now we're gonna take this excess off down here because you are gonna have fabric down here and you don't want this hard plastic at the bend. It's not gonna be right. So if you have any excess, I am just going to take my applique scissors and I am just going to trim this down. I'm going to leave a little bit there so it doesn't pull out, but I am just going to remove all of this excess right here. Okay. So that is what it looks like right there. Now we're going to do the next step, which is going to be placing this front and the liner of that front piece at the same time. So I'm just gonna use this fabric. I already had this cut for the ear size, so it's a little big, but I don't care. So I'm gonna go ahead. You wanna measure like from here to here and here to here if you want like closer measurements. You are gonna do the flip. So we're gonna go ahead and put right side down like this. It's gonna stitch a line here and then you're gonna flip it over. So you need a little bit bigger than this, but you definitely don't need this much. This is just what I'm gonna do because I don't wanna trim it. Okay, so you're gonna start on the bottom. You're gonna flip your hoop upside down. Here's the line you're working with right here. You're gonna take the right side of your liner fabric. You're gonna put it face down. You're gonna bring it next to this line and then just pull it down. And then you are gonna tape it. Now, if you have directional fabric, like kitty heads or something on here, you're gonna like, in the end, you're gonna be pulling it down like this. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure your kitties are facing like while you're looking at it this way. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure your kitties are like, let me, let me draw hearts because I'm not gonna be able to draw kitties. You're gonna want them facing this direction on the back of your hoop. You don't want it the up upside down because then it will be upside down, okay? So this is how you wanna face it, okay? So there's that. Now you're gonna flip this over. You're gonna go ahead and do the exact same thing over here. This is the top of your hoop. So you're gonna take the right side of your front fabric. This is gonna show. You're gonna put it right side down onto your hoop. You're gonna go ahead and pull it over this line because you need it to tack down on this line. Make sure it's straight. Tape it down or you can hold it. Now this is the same. You're gonna want your directions to go like this when you flip it back over. So you're gonna end up flipping it like this after and you want your kitties facing you, not upside down, okay? So we are ready to go. I'm gonna take it over to the machine. The very next step is gonna do one line right here on this line right here. It's gonna basically tack down the liner that's underneath the hoop and this top piece. And I will come back and show you what it looks like. Okay guys, this is what it looks like. It went ahead and did that line right there, tacking the front and the back to your stabilizer. So now what you can do is you can take off this tape on the back now you're gonna pull it straight down. I have all this excess fabric. It's probably gonna get in the way. I'm just gonna cut some of it. Mine was too big. Okay, I'm just gonna bring it down. You just want it flat. Go ahead and tape it down. Okay, 
So you have that straight down and then go to the front and do the exact same thing. Take the tape off, flip this down. Now you can hold this or you can tape it. I always hold it because I get it um, tighter and smoother. I hold it as it goes around, but I'll tape it too. If you want to tape it, it's like that. Now the next step, what it's going to do is it's going to go ahead and just stitch around this curve right here. That's it, just a curve. And it's going to tack down your, um, this piece, the bottom front piece and the liner front piece. So I'm going to go ahead and go to my sh machine and stitch the next step and I'll come show you what that looks like. Okay guys, this is what it looks like. It went ahead and just stitched this curve. Like I said, here's the front of your bag. Here's the underneath. Has it all stitched, okay? So what we're gonna do next is the placement stitch for the ears. So I'm gonna go back to the machine. I'm gonna run the next step. It's just gonna go ahead and do placements directly on here, showing us how to line up these ears. So I'm gonna go ahead and run that and I'll come back and show you what it looks okay, like. Okay guys, this is what it looks like. It went ahead and did the placements right here for your ears. These are really nifty placements because it shows you a couple things. It sort of shows you the center, so your ears are not off, but it also shows you where to place them. So they look right on the bag. And it also shows you this line right here. And that's where you wanna line up the other line. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go, this is the front, you want, I mine look the same, sorry, but you can tell the front, the front has a line right here and the back does not. So you wanna use the front of your ears, which are this way, this is the front, you're gonna go ahead and you can fold them in half if you wanna get the center like this. You can fold it like that. You can go ahead and place it like this. So you can see that center line right there is on the center of this. And you can see that this line, you want it right, the line right above it like that, okay? So you are all set. You have it centered with this line and you have this line right above it, not below it above, okay? So then you're gonna go ahead and go like that. Make sure, then I go like this and I make sure I'm straight across this line, like the line is straight so it's not sideways. And come down a little, okay? Just like that. Now you wanna make sure this line right here is above the line right here. Otherwise, you're gonna see the line on the front. You'll see that line on your kitty ears. So that's why you wanna line it that way, okay? So let's do it again right here. Let me show you this right here. There's a line right here. I'll point to it right there. This is the line. You'll see it when you do the placement. This is the placement right here, that line, okay? So now this line, on here, you want that line to be right above this line on the zipper right here. If you put it below, then you will see when this flips over later, you will see the line on your finished bag. That's why it needs to be a little bit above. Hope that makes sense, okay? So let's play the, place this one. Take the front of your ear, fold it, fold it towards each other like this. Go ahead and place your ear like this because it's going to go towards the inside of your bag, right, the right side, front side down. So I'm actually folding it the other way like this, okay? Fold it with the front side out. Place, you can see if you place it here, that's the center. And you can also see this line right next to this line. So at that point, you can put it down a little bit, okay? So you just go like that. You're on the center, let it fall down. I flip this way and make sure my line is straight and back that direction. And then you tape down and you are ready to go. That's all you have to do for the ear placements, okay? So I'm gonna go back to the machine. The next step is gonna just tack these ears down so they're held in place. And the machine is gonna start from the center of the ear so it's not gonna get caught on the side of these pulling them out. So it's just gonna stitch in the middle, tacking these down, okay? So I'm gonna go run that. I'll come back and show you. 
Okay guys, this is what it looks like right here. We went ahead and ran step seven, which tacked this down, and then step eight, which tacked this side down. So you have your ears all tacked down and ready to go. Now we are gonna go ahead and put the back of the bag on the front of the bag. And whenever you do that, you're gonna open your zipper. Make sure you open the zipper. So we're gonna open it far enough that we can turn our bag through it, but not so far that you can't get the foot of your machine by the edge, because the foot of your machine is gonna go by this edge several times. So I'm just gonna place it like probably right there. That's probably fine. Okay, now we need a piece of back fabric and a piece of liner. They're gonna be the exact same size. They can be different fabrics, but you're just gonna measure from the top of your zipper up here, not the ears, just this top part right here down to the bottom. There's placement right here. And then you're gonna make sure your piece of fabric is wider than these stitches right here. So you're just gonna measure from here to here and here to here, and you need two pieces of fabric that size. So I have that measured right here. So there's this one, and then I'm using this for my uh, liner and the back of my bag. Now keep in mind, your liner is gonna be what shows through this clear part. The back of your bag will just be on the back of your bag. So that's how you can determine what fabric you wanna do. So I have these two pieces, and I always add interfacing to the front and back of my bag. So the front of this bag is right here, and you wouldn't do interfacing because you're gonna have a clear front. So I'm just gonna add interfacing to the back. And all the interfacing does is it makes your fabric thicker. It's optional, you do not have to do it. You can just use this piece of fabric right now and it would work just fine. I'm just gonna go ahead and add one piece of lightweight fusible interfacing. This is what I use. Lightweight, it's Pellin. 44FPKG8. I just get it at Joann's in the interfacing section. And if you can't find that one, it doesn't matter. You can use lightweight, you can use medium weight. You're just using some interfacing to make your fabric thicker. You can use fusible fleece if you want it even thicker than that. So it's not a huge deal. I'm gonna go ahead and iron my fabric. I'm gonna turn the right side of my fabric facing down. I already cut a piece of this interfacing. If you haven't used it before, one side smooth, one side is textured. So I'm gonna take the rough textured side, place it on the wrong side of my fabric like this, and then I'm just gonna put some heat on it, which is going to basically stick them together. Okay, so now this piece of fabric is a little bit thicker than this piece. And this is my liner. I never put interfacing on my liner. I really only put it on the outside front and the outside back of my bags when I use woven fabric, okay? So we are ready to go. So you're gonna use this piece first because we're doing the back of our bag first and then the liner, okay? So we have our zipper open. This is also where you add anything that you want hanging off of your bag. Like a lot of people use like fold over elastic, which is just pretty elastic. They use these D swivel lobster clasps so they can hook onto backpacks or whatever. And what you would do is you just put it on like this. You would put it with the hardware facing inside because we're gonna cut off anything on the outside and you would place it along any of this outside stitch line. I'm not gonna place this, but I just wanted to show you how. This is how you would do it. You would tape this down and then you would take the back of your bag fabric and you're gonna place that right side facing down like this. Make sure you're over all your stitch lines. That's how you would place this. I'm not gonna put one on this bag, but I just wanted to show you because lots of people wanna have that on. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and place this face down, making sure I'm past all my placement lines. Okay, and then I'm gonna go to the machine I'm gonna run the next step. You can tape this. I'm gonna make sure my kitties are straight. You can tape this or you can just hold it as the machine goes. The machine is gonna go all the way around these original placement stitches several times, sealing your bag. Make sure your zipper's open. That's most important. So I'm gonna go ahead and stitch the next step. I will come back and show you what it looks like. Okay guys, this is what it looks like. It went ahead and sealed the bag. So we are great, the back of our bag is now on. So you're gonna go ahead and flip your hoop over to the back side. Now remember the heart shape, you wanna keep in mind which way to face your fabric. You don't wanna be facing it 
you want to be facing it this way so the kitties are going down like this you don't want to face it the opposite direction otherwise it will be upside down also keep in mind the fabric you're placing now is what you're going to see through the clear front so make sure to place it how you want and that you have the correct fabric on here the only thing you need to do is make sure your directional fabrics place the right direction and that your fabric gets around this entire stitch line here okay so I'm going to go ahead and place it up here. I tend to place this fabric a little bit up, but I tend to leave a little bit extra down in the bottom because that's where you're going to close your bag. And I like to have a little bit of fabric in the bottom. Okay, so just make sure that your fabric's all placed correctly. I think that kitty... I'm trying to see if I want that kitty right there. This kitty will all be showing a lot. Okay, I think I'm just gonna do it like that. Those two kitties will be showing, okay? So once you have your fabric placed correctly, take tape. Go ahead and tape all the way around so it, your fabric does not come up. This is on the underneath of your hoop, remember? And then you're gonna bring it to your machine. You're gonna stitch the very last stitch step that's gonna go ahead and stitch the same direction. It's gonna stitch here. It's gonna leave an opening right here. It's gonna stitch here, it's gonna stitch back, and then you will be ready to go. I'm gonna go ahead and go stitch that. Make sure you do the right side of your fabric. I don't know if I said that, the right side of your fabric facing down, okay? I'm gonna go stitch that. I'll come right back and show you what it looks like, guys. This is what the front of your bag looks like. And this is what the back of your bag looks like. We're going to go ahead and take it off our hoop because we are done stitching now. Okay, and then you can take all your stabilizer off that you can get to right now. Okay. Now you're going to be able to cut around your bag. So I always turn it over because you will see that what the last stitch did is it stitched all the way around but leaving a hole. It stops here and stops here. So you have a hole right here. So the way that I cut this bag, you can see it a little better on this side but you can't see where the hole is. So I always cut from this side and I just cut right up to those stitch lines. There's stitch lines right here where they stop right there. Then I turn and I go ahead and I just cut all the way around. You're gonna be cutting off your zippers and stuff, so make sure you have um, heavy duty scissors to get around this. Don't cut any of your stitch lines. You're cutting through these ears, the excess ear fabric, so you're gonna need heavy duty scissors. Okay, come all the way around. Once you get here, cut to where the stitches stop on this side and then turn your scissors that way. That's all garbage. I'm just gonna trim this a little bit because we do not need that much. Now, you need to locate your liner pieces. This is your liner and then this piece is your liner. You have the piece on either side of the hole. You need these two pieces to help close your bag, but you don't need this excess. So I'm gonna go ahead and just fold this over and then cut. Make sure you don't cut at an angle because if you cut kind of like this, you end up cutting these stitches. So you don't need to cut it so close that it messes up your bag. You're just trying to get some of the bulk out of there, but be really careful not to cut those stitches, okay? So now that you're all trimmed and ready to go, you can flip through this hole. It shouldn't be terribly hard. You do have that clear vinyl in here, but it's not super thick, so. Just get it turned and try to be careful at the edges so you don't tear your um, woven fabric. So I'm just flipping this. Okay, you don't have to have it super perfect because we are gonna be um, turning it again. I'm gonna get it somewhat good though. On this bag, we're gonna be taking the stabilizer out and it pretty much is a lot of stabilizer since we don't have a liner. We have one liner, but not two. So you're gonna be taking all the stabilizer out. So I am gonna get it a little flatter and cleaner for us to do work with. Okay, so we have it flipped. You can see we're gonna close this hole now. Now there's several ways to close this hole. The reason I leave this excess fabric is because I flip it in on itself and then I sandwich it. 
you have stitch lines right here and I kind of make try to make it where you don't see those stitch lines. That's kind of where I sandwich it so it covers those up. So you can go like this. Okay guys, this is what it looks like. Now there's several ways to close this hole. You can ladder stitch it. You can stitch it with a sewing machine. You can use glue. I use this clear fabric tack glue. It's really, it's really fast. It dries within three to five minutes. It doesn't leave a lot of thick, um, hard residue on the bottom. I really like this fabric tack glue. It's inexpensive because you don't use very much, so it lasts a long time. The other thing you can do is you can use this peel and stick fabric fuse. You basically, I'm not gonna use this this time. If you wanna see um, a video of me using this, I did it on the Daybreak full front bag, but you basically just cut a piece of this. It's sticky. So then you just put it in the hole, you push it down, then you take the backing off and you just squeeze. And that's all you have to do and it closes it. I'm gonna use the glue because I find it to be a little bit faster and easier for me. So that's what I'm gonna use. Okay, so once I get it set up, I'm just gonna go ahead and open a little bit. I just do those clips from the beginning so I can get it lined up really good before I put the glue on it. Just getting this excess glue off. Okay, so it's just clear glue, comes out clear. You just go, I just go ahead and put it like along the stitches. There's stitch lines in here. And I just put it in there. I just go ahead and squish it together. I put clip on, I'll scoot this clip over. I open the next part. I put the next part of glue all the way in. It's really fast and if you have excess glue, I really just take some of my scrap fabric or my finger and I just wipe it. Okay, and then I scoot it over. I do the last little part right here. Get another clip. Okay, now this can sit from like three to five minutes and it will be perfectly great. I will show you what that looks like once it's dry. In the meantime, while that's drying, I take off the stabilizer. So your zipper is open. You can kind of, mine tears pretty easily. So you can see I get it from the edge and then I can just tear sideways. See how it's just coming out of the perforation right there? I kind of go kind of slow so I can get it in big full pieces. And then like this. Okay, now you have some stitches up here, so this one's not gonna tear as easy. And you have a placement stitch, you see how I tore it? I'm just gonna, so I got like almost that whole piece off in one piece. So you're just gonna go ahead and clean the rest of your bag up. Your zipper's open, you can pull like that because then that's what opens your zipper. There's other placement stitches. Go ahead and cut those or tear them, whichever you prefer. Get all of your stabilizer cleaned up and then I'll come back and show you what we do next. Okay guys, I got the stabilizer off. It looks pretty clean to me and I'm gonna go ahead and take these clips off. It's been a few minutes so it's dry enough to turn. You can see that it's completely enclosed. There's no opening, it's clean, it's not gluey or thick or anything. Okay, so now we're gonna turn through this hole right here, your zipper hole. Now you're gonna to wanna to get it turned really good because this is the finish of your bag. I'm gonna get it turned all the way. turning system just to get the corners completely out. Okay. Getting it flat. This is also where I would probably iron it from the back. I wouldn't iron this front part, but you could iron it or just use your hands really good to get it straight and flat. Okay, there you go. Here's the super cute kitty pencil pouch. You just open your zipper. There you go. It's all lined. You don't see any of the stitch lines. It's super cute. I hope that helps you make this bag. Again, this is the 5x7 hoop size kitty um, pencil 
pouch by Parker on the Porch. All of the links, if you go to see more underneath or show more underneath my video, right below, it will have all the links to different stuff I buy, like the zippers and the fabrics and stuff. This, these fabrics are from Joann's, this kitty fabric and this polka dot is both from Joann's. So you can get it there. And please subscribe and do a like, thumbs up if you liked this video and it helped you. It helps people see my channel and I appreciate it. Let me know if you have any questions and I will get back to you as soon as I see them. Thank you so much. Hope you enjoyed. Can't wait to see your bags.